everyone, in today's video we're going to be doing an on-location portrait photo shoot with a vintage lens which I'm super excited to be doing again. So today I have the Helios 44-2 which is a 58mm f2 lens on a full frame camera. So the first camera that I'm going to be shooting on is the Sony a7 III and then I also have the Fujifilm X-T4 which we'll be shooting on as well. So yeah, very excited. Today's model is Matilda, Lydia's done hair and makeup and Dan is behind the camera filming and I really hope you guys enjoy today's behind the scenes. Wow, you can really see the swirly bokeh in this location. Yeah, I love that big movement with your hands up towards your head. So I've got a really nice wide angle shot here. Oh, I like that. And we'll get a slightly close up shot there. Get a portrait as well. It's a little hard to see through both the LCD and the viewfinder. I feel like neither really helps me that much. I had a few questions about this in my last vintage lens video, but the Helios is a lens that was made for film cameras, so when you use it on a digital camera, you have to manual focus. Something this Helios lens is known for is the swirly bucket. Okay, I'm gonna get like a super duper close up. All the vintage lenses I own, I get in the M42 mount, so I can adapt it to any system that I use. Do you wanna bring your hand up to your shoulder? So that's why I'm using both the Sony and Fujifilm for today's photo shoot, and I can also adapt them to Canon EF or RF. And maybe with that hand, tuck your hair, yeah. <laughs> I love it when I go to say something and you're already doing it. <laughs> try and shoot at a little bit more of an angle. So would you be able to face me a little bit more like with your knees too? There are a few cool reasons that you might want to use a vintage lens on your digital camera. First, it's really fun to use. I really like feeling more involved in my shoots when you have to manual focus. You also get some really interesting looking results that are just not possible with digital lenses. And finally, and I think one of the most important reasons is that you can pick up some really great quality vintage lenses for a super cheap price. I know you can find it a little bit cheaper, but this Helios was 80 Australian dollars. I also wanted to get one full body shot just in the middle of this. I'm gonna try and get like a super wide shot to see how much swell we can get. I'm gonna use these leaves as some foreground blur as well. That looks so cool. I find that the LCD is higher quality than the viewfinder on the a7 III. I'm also more used to it, so I use the screen the majority of the time to see my focus, but I switched it up depending on the lighting and how much I could see. Okay, yeah, maybe you can do a little sway. You can like kick your legs around a little as well. Very casual. Yeah, that's so cool, I love that. And then do you want to walk towards me? Just kind of very whimsical like that. This Helios is not the sharpest lens, especially compared to the Super Takamas I used in my last vintage lens video and the other Super Takama lenses I use for my personal photography. Okay, just there is good. I'm gonna get some portraits of you. Can you take one little step back? I've got a really nice like framing with the leaves in this shot. I found that the Helios was really hard to see focus in the mid-length portraits especially. And do you wanna do that where you hold your hands behind your back? Maybe you could turn around and look at me a little more. Yeah, even looking off to the side looks really nice. This lens though really shined for close-up portraits and it was so much easier to see focus when I was taking a headshot style photo. That bridge is so cool. When I get some shots here, I don't want too much sun because this Helios does have a very, very strong lens flare, so I want to avoid that. But I think we'll shoot maybe just here. Do you want to sit on the mm -hmm. ground? That looks so pretty. Very picnic vibes. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. All up, I took about 300 photos on the a7 III. I had to take extra images while shooting the mid-length portraits as the focus wasn't super sharp on her face. I wanna get a close-up of you doing that, it looks really nice. 
With the close-up images, I was able to be more decisive with the pictures I took because I could really see when it was in focus. And then do you want to lay on your stomach? Is that okay? I edited all these photos with my Palm Valley Lightroom preset pack, which I'll leave linked down below if you guys want to see some more before and after examples. Okay, and then I need to lay down so I can get some more pocket. Oh. I did have to tweak these images a bit more compared to usual though. The Helios has a slight brown wash, so I bumped up the saturation of the yellows and greens to counter that, and I increased the red saturation to make the dress stand out. Yeah, if you want to paste on the spot, that will look nice. This lens also renders very low contrast images, especially paired with the fact that I was shooting backlit. So I did a fair amount of dodging and burning in Photoshop to bring that pop and contrast back that I love for my photos. Perfect. And then we'll chuck the jacket and we'll do a couple more. I want to get some movement shots. So I love that pacing and yeah, that's amazing. Sun's gone. <laughs> mm. So if you could see it on that first step, I think it would look nice. Sun's back. Thanks, sun. <laughs> wow, I've got such a strong lens flare from this lens. I like that with your elbow leaning on that. Okay, that looks really nice. Now I'm switching over to the Fujifilm X-T4, which has an APS-C sensor. So the Helios 44-2 is now giving us a field of view of 87 millimeters, which makes this a really nice portrait lens. Yeah, I like that close-up right there. I'm getting a little lower. So I think if you stand just up there, there's like a little flat bit on the stairs. I used all of the different focus assist features on the X-T4 and I found that the grid was the most useful when taking mid-length portraits, but I did also like the split image as well. Focus peaking is really distracting for me personally, so I don't like using it on either Fujifilm or Sony. And then would you be able to crouch? like facing towards a tree. Okay, this spot looks so nice. We've just got a little bit of backlight behind Matilda. This lens has such a strong lens flare that just overpowers the image. So I still want to shoot with backlight, but I need to be able to control it so the whole photo doesn't come out just white. The lighting in this location was causing a lens flare that was really overpowering depending on what angle I was shooting from. I'm using the M42 to Canon EF adapter as this allows me to then adapt to Sony with a Metabones and to Fuji with an EF to FX adapter. The Metabones adapter is designed to reduce and control internal reflections, so I didn't run into any major lens flare troubles on the Sony. Okay, I think I'm gonna try and switch the focus assist to the focus peaking on red. I feel like it's really hard to see the split focus assist in the backlight because it kind of washes out the picture a lot. On the other hand, the EF to FX adapter I was using for Fujifilm is a budget manual only adapter that does not have a design that reduces internal reflections. Because of that, in the X-T4 photos, you can see a very strong solid white lens flare which covers half the image. So when I was taking backlit images, I felt very restricted with the angles I could shoot from, trying to avoid that crazy lens flare. Let me get in a little closer to you. I'm down there, maybe the sun won't like hit my lens. Okay, yeah, this is a really nice close-up shot here. Using an EF to FX Metabones and adding a lens hood would likely help avoid this lens flare from happening. I am also interested in getting a speed booster to be able to shoot with EF converted glass on Fuji X mount with a reduced crop factor. Oh, maybe we should get one more with the flowers. Could you stand just here as close as you're comfortable next to the bush? Yeah. All right, so this is like a mid-length portrait right here. 
Whoa, the red and the blue look so good together. Overall, this lens was really fun to use and I like the results that I got from it. I personally still prefer the 55mm f2 Super Takuma from my last vintage lens video and the Super Takuma 50mm 1.4 which I haven't filmed a video with yet. The bokeh from those lenses are just to die for, they're so so pretty. I'll leave the 55 f2 video linked in my description by the way if you guys want to watch it. But the Helios 44-2 is a lens you can pick up for a super cheap price and it renders really beautiful results. I especially love it for close-up portraits and the mid-length images where you can really see that bokeh swirl. But I would love to know which ones were your favorite photos down in the comments below and if you guys would like to see more portrait photo shoots with vintage lenses as well. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye. It's a lot easier to focus when I'm very, very close up. It's just a lot easier to see the eyes.